Hello and welcome, my purple butterfly leaves. Yeah, we're back with King Oja and this continues to be so good. And we get one thing that we waited so long on Dom Brothers for that shouldn't have been a thing that is put at the end. We get our first team shot. So, let's get into it. Episode 5. The Winter Ruler Comet. Well, Gira gets transported to Gokan, bound on a chain, dangling down from the butterfly here. This is great. <laughs> also, the third of the three gods apparently is buried under ice and snow. And which country do we have that is full of ice and snow? <laughs> well, of course the country that puts like evildoers in a snowman to keep them chained up, iced up. Yeah, this is Gokan, which the name comes from the Japanese word for midwinter and the capital Saiban comes from Saiban, which means judgment. This is the country of judgment and stuff after all. And then we have the final transformation phase. Until the extra ranger appears, of course, which is pop it on. Sounding like papillon, kinda ish a bit. It's not the strongest one, but I guess it works. Still, tomboy for tonbo is the best so far. And well, the bugnog attack, thus the transformation, because why? Uh, well, it could be to fight Gira, I guess. But yeah, this is a great performance done here and I really enjoyed this fighting scene. Especially as we do focus on something different this episode. So let's get the fighting out of the way I guess because you need to have some fighting in these shows after all. So <laughs> this hits kinda personally. This guy is a scalper and he gets six months in the minus 10 degrees Celsius jail. And yes, scalping Technically is not a crime. Technically. But still something like, don't do that. Stop it. It's annoying and it doesn't help anyone. And of course, another great character in this show because all five of our main team are really, really good characters. This scene shows us that Rita here is a bit of a weirdo because all those puppets talk. Well, she is doing the talking, but like even if that wasn't the case, which just makes it weirder that it is, her having all these plush dolls is a great addition to her usually stern personality. She basically has the on-job personality and the off-job personality, her being a judge here. Yeah, that's just great. Also, another thing about her is she just wants to be done with it and even though Gira seems to be guilty and she kinda just wants to go on with it and put him into guilty, she can't, she needs to gather the evidence for it, because even with a slight chance of him not being guilty, she has to find that out. And that's how every law should work, not guilty until proven guilty. So good thing she does follow that. Ah, Blue Boy is back home apparently, I mean... I guess, why would he be in that freezing cold country, right? But yeah, she asks him and some other people certain things regarding Gira and his ability to actually control King Oja, which is a weird ability to have if you're not royal. She also slaps Rakles straight into his face. Why? 
Oh, well, he had a mosquito on his cheek, so she just wanted to get rid of that. Having blood on her hand now. Hmm. His blood. Royal blood. Blood that is not blue, though. That's weird. And then, trial and session. Rita immediately pronounces Gira as innocent. Okay. Just wait what happens now. You probably know because you have watched the episode before watching a review. Wait what happens now. Yeah. All the evidence she tried to gather to prove him guilty led to him being revealed as Rakle's brother. That is something that was kind of obvious. It was either Rakles isn't even royalty and Gira is, or Gira is his brother or something. Definitely, Gira needed to be royalty for this whole thing to work. The surprising thing, though, is that they reveal that in episode 5. Because usually they keep secrets like this kind of forever, even though the audience, probably even the small children this is actually aimed at, gather that by now as well, but no, not in this show. They just go out and say it. Well, he is royalty. He is the little brother of Rakles. Little is probably the problem here because, well, the heir to the throne usually is the oldest child. So it's not completely out of the way that he needs to rebel against his brother, which I appreciate that because that's an interesting storyline. And again, I just feel so much with Gira here because, like, she asked the populace if he did something bad and they mainly show the children he interacted with, who all said he was a good guy who helped us a lot. We appreciated him being there. And yeah, I work with children a lot of times in my life and that's just a great thing. Children are awesome. So me and Gira, we're vibing. And this freaking line here is just awesome. Rakles telling Rita that you'll be making an enemy out of me if you set Gira free, even though he is innocent. And she just saying, well, judgment is a spear that slays kings. Nice delivery. Especially as ice cold as she does it. That's great. I love this. And then we have it. The team transformation and team posing, which is so awesome. I kind of have a feeling this isn't the final pose we get because they kind of pushed Gira a bit out of the way while doing it. Probably not the thing they continue to do, just for this episode, very likely. But I love it. Team shots are one of the most important things in the Super Sentai show for me. And yes... It does seem like a little thing. It's just an image. But it's one of those images you put on a poster. An image you use as a desktop background. An image that you use to represent the whole show. And I hate going back to Dom Brothers again for this, but them not having an official team shot of the full team until the very few last episodes... That took away so much, sadly. And was completely remedied by this. Yes, I am so happy with King Oja. And, well, they also pilot the mecha altogether. Kinda? Because as Papillon Oja is the sword and that got kicked away, she kind of is out of the battle. Until she starts flapping her wings and flies and the sword acts on its own. Okay, that's cool. And them not really agreeing with each other and everyone just shouting, follow my lead, somehow leads to the finisher attack of the King Oja. That's weird, but also kind of cool because 
everyone wants the others to follow their lead, that's kind of them agreeing with each other. Or they kind of want the same thing. In a way. So I guess there's a bond there. Ultimately, everyone wants to defeat the enemy and maybe their lead they wanted to give was the same for all of them and thus it worked. Something like that, probably. And then everyone goes home. Oh well. But the episode ends showing us that the Bagnarok had a different thing in mind. And I kind of love how they always use the months of the week not really to defeat the King Oja, but rather to distract them. Thus, their plans actually work out. The bad guys are kind of winning. And that's great. Well, this time around, they got the third god. Oh, they got the third god. That's not good. Now, this episode was... This was again great. What can I say? I love this show so far. Nothing was disappointing. Literally nothing bad I can really say about this show. It was executed in such great ways. Yeah, that's that. Now it's your time to tell me what you think about this episode and the show so far, because now that we have the team assembled, I think first impressions of what the show might be in its whole might be a good thing to do. And did you know that you can actually put criminals to judgment by clicking the like and subscribe button as well as that little bell? Well, do that, because that's the right thing to do. Or else, if you don't, Rita will come and put you to judgment. Also, check out the links down in the description below, leading to my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord, where I keep you updated, post stuff, all the good things. My merch store is there as well, and of course my Twitch, where I live stream every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I hope to see you over there as well, and until next time, bye-bye!